Welcome back to Lipid Biosynthesis on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. In the previous video, we did a brief intro to fatty acid synthesis, and that was talking about how we actually get acetyl-CoA into the cytoplasm. And we talked about how it was an indirect process, because we actually first get citrate out into the cytoplasm, and then citrate lyase gives us acetyl-CoA. The NADPH produced is going to come back in another video. We won't see that yet, but we're going to see how we initially utilize this acetyl-CoA. So that's the topic of this video, really the enzyme acetyl-CoA carboxylase. All right, so what does this enzyme do? Well, acetyl-CoA carboxylase is going to carboxylate acetyl-CoA. It's going to add an extra carbon as a carboxyl group, and it's going to give us this molecule shown down here called malonyl-CoA. Notice that this molecule is essentially just acetyl-CoA with an extra carboxyl group on the end. And it turns out that fatty acid synthesis really doesn't use a lot of acetyl-CoA directly. It still requires acetyl-CoA, but it's going to convert that acetyl-CoA into malonyl-CoA. So how does this work? The enzyme acetyl-CoA carboxylase is a bifunctional enzyme, as you can see here. It has two activities. The first part is a biotin carboxylase, and the second activity is called a transcarboxylase. So it's not directly shown here, but the biotin carboxylase is a part of the enzyme that's going to carboxylate biotin. So here, kind of in the center, and you can imagine this thing kind of rotating to move this biotin arm uh, between the two domains. Initially, the biotin was over here. That's what this entire cofactor is right here. And you'll notice one of these nitrogen atoms, this one right here, is actually carboxylated. This carboxyl group was added onto this nitrogen of biotin by biotin carboxylase. Okay, And once this biotin gets carboxylated, this biotin carrier protein, which is held in there um, in the protein itself, can actually rotate and, as you can see by this arrow, move this biotin arm and swing it over to the transcarboxylase domain. And so what happens is the transcarboxylase domain is the, is the domain of the enzyme that's going to carboxylate acetyl-CoA. In other words, what's going to happen is this carboxyl group is going to be transferred from the biotin onto acetyl-CoA. And you see here the product of the enzyme. We have regenerated biotin, which will then swing back over to the biotin carboxylase domain for a second reaction. But the major thing to consider is now we have malonyl-CoA. Now, malonyl-CoA is really the direct molecule that's used by uh, what is going to be termed fatty acid synthase, which is an appropriate name for an enzyme that performs fatty acid synthesis. Um, malonyl-CoA is what's directly used. Even though acetyl-CoA is not directly used, we still need a lot of the acetyl-CoA to form this malonyl-CoA. And what we're going to show in the next video is that this large multi-subunit uh, multifunctional enzyme, fatty acid synthase, is going to catalyze every single step of fatty acid synthesis. And it's going to utilize a lot of these malonyl coas as we're going to see. Now, a couple of things. Um, one, I'm actually going to include this in this playlist, probably right after this video. I'm going to include a simple video on the mechanism of acetyl-CoA carboxylase. It's a nice mechanism to know, and in some cases, um, some courses may ask you to draw the mechanism or know the mechanism, but I'll show this mechanism of how we carboxylate acetyl-CoA into malonyl-CoA. And the second thing is, Fatty acid synthase, as we'll see in the next video, is going to be able to synthesize fatty acids, okay, as we would expect, okay? Um, it's going to add two carbons at a time, and in fact, the two carbons it's going to add are these carbons that are in pink right here, these two that were originally part of acetyl-CoA. Fatty acid synthase is going to be able to generate fatty acids that are at a maximum 16 carbons in length. And so 16 carbons would be a palmitate fatty acid. And so we're only going to be able to generate up to 16 carbons. And so that's what we're going to focus on in the next video. We're going to focus on the function of fatty acid synthase. I'll give you kind of a, a briefing on this. Um, this is the video where we're going to talk about fatty acid synthase. So please join us for more information on that. But hopefully this video gave you some intuition on...
how we actually generate malonyl-CoA from acetyl-CoA. It occurs by this acetyl-CoA carboxylase, and we'll eventually have a video on the regulation of fatty acid synthesis. And what we'll find is that acetyl-CoA carboxylase in some organisms is a heavily regulated enzyme, uh, both allosterically and transcriptionally. All right, please make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you very much.